Welcome to Pouse Around the House. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add two sockets to an existing ring circuit. I'll show you how to access the cables, how to extend the cables, how to fix the new sockets to the wall, how to make all the connections, and throughout the video, I'll show you the tools that I use to successfully complete this task. So you can see I've marked the position of my new sockets in pencil on the wall, and off camera, using a pry bar and some gentle force, I have prized the skirting board away from the wall. Then using my multi-tool, I've chased two lines down the wall for my cables to sit. I've then chipped them away using a hammer and a screwdriver as the plaster is quite soft. And again, using the pry bar, I've lifted one of my floorboards, and this has given me access to this cable on the ring circuit underneath. So here's my cable access kit, which I'm going to use to push the new cable under the floor and back up the other side. If you're interested in this tool or any other tools or products used in this video, I'll put links to them all in the description section below. So I force my flexible rod under the floor. I've now got my hand wedged underneath, trying to grab the other end. Once I get hold of it, I pull it up. I leave a bit sticking out of the floor. Then I take some 2.5 millimeter twin and earth cable, which is the suitable cable for my ring circuit, which will be protected by a 32 amp MCB. I tape this to my rod using some insulation tape and then pull it back through underneath the floorboards. And whilst this looks relatively easy, it did take a few minutes as I kept getting caught up on the joist, but with a bit of gentle persuasion, we got there. Using my side cutters, I just snip away the insulation tape. You'll notice here that when I push the cable through, I actually doubled it over. This just means that I can snip it at one end and it'll become two cables, which will be my supply and return to my sockets. I'll explain all this in a minute. And then on cue, my little helper. Now, if you take a look at my existing sockets, you'll notice they're set at new build regulation height. However, since this is an older property and it's not a legal requirement, I'll be sitting these sockets inside patchress boxes directly on top of the skirting board. The reason for the patchress boxes is just to avoid chasing the walls and making a mess, and to be honest, they'll be hidden behind the TV anyway. With my skirting board loosely pushed back into place, I use my pencil to mark two points where I'm going to drill the skirting board. This is going to be where I secure the skirting board back to the wall. I place a 5mm wood drill bit into my drill, and then start to drill the holes. I now replace the wood drill bit with a 5mm masonry drill bit. I place this through the holes I made in the timber and mark two points on the wall. Then I remove the skirting board, check my holes only to find that one of them has missed the plaster. So repeat the process and try again. So now I've marked the positions of the holes on my wall, I use a 6mm SDS drill bit in my SDS drill, put it to rotary hammer action, and now I can drill the full depth of the hole ready for my wall plug. An SDS drill is a much more efficient way to drill into brick or masonry, and a 6mm drill bit produces the right diameter hole for the plugs that I'm using, but I'll explain that in a minute. I give the plug holes in the area a quick going over with the Henry Hoover just to remove any dust, and here you'll notice where I prise the skirting board off the wall, the screws and the plugs have been left in place. So I'm going to leave these on the skirting board because they're lining it up in the old holes. And if anything, they add an extra fix in helping to secure it back to the wall. I'm using these Fisher Dual Power 6x30 plugs. For more detailed information on using these wall plugs, I've done a whole other video on this and a link to that video will pop up on the screen now and I'll put a link to that video in the description section below. Once pushed into the wall by hand, I just gently finish off the plugs with a hammer. So now I manoeuvre the skirting board back into place, lifting the cables and pushing them into the chase that I made earlier, before giving it a quick tap back into the correct position. Then I take my countersink bit, place it in my impact driver and create some holes for my screw heads, which will be filled and painted over later. I'm using these 45 by 50 mm screws, I place them into the hole and then finish off with the impact driver. You have to be careful with old walls and old plaster because as you can see here that plug expanded and actually broke a bit of plaster out. Now in my case I'm lucky as it's going to be hidden behind the patris box. Just something to bear in mind. If you take a look at the patris box I'm using there are several potential holes that you can use for your cables. You just need to break out the ones suitable for you. I do this by placing the patris box on the floor and just using a screwdriver to push the holes through and they should break away quite easily. Just be careful not to use excessive force like I did a few minutes earlier or this will happen. I push the cables through the holes I made in the patris box and place it into position. Then using a 5mm masonry drill bit, I drill through the holes in the back of the patris box, marking the positions of the holes. Then I can remove the patris boxes from the wall and using a 6mm SDS drill bit in my SDS drill, I can drive through the full size of the hole ready for the plugs. As stated earlier, this is the size of the drill bit required for the plugs I'm using. And again, keep everything clean with a Henry Hoover. Using the same process as earlier in the video, I'm using the Fisher Dual Power Plugs. I push them into the wall by hand and then follow up with a hammer. I push the patris box back over the cables and manoeuvre into position. I take the screws I used earlier and drive them into the plugs using my impact driver. Then I repeat the process for the other patris box. 
Now I feed one cable through to the Patras box on the right, and I take another bit of cable, cut it to length, and feed that back through, and this will join the two sockets together maintaining the ring circuit. I'm actually going to take that cable back out now while I prepare the ends using my CK automatic wire strippers. If you want to see a review on this wire strippers, I'll put a link to that video on the screen now. I snip the end of the grey sheath using my side cutters, and taking the bare earth wire with my pliers, if I pull that down to the point that I strip the sheath, it should come away nicely. Then just repeat the process for the other side of the cable, and for the rest of the cables coming into the Patras box. Once this is done, I use the wire stripper to strip the ends of the individual wires. And I just trim down the copper to size using my side cutters. Then I get some earth sheath, I slide it over the bare earth wires, mark it up to the right length and snip it with the side cutters, then do this for all the earth wires. So now it's time to fit the sockets. If you look on the back of the socket, you should find the screws and the screw caps. I just remove these from the back of the socket so I don't lose them. To remove the screws, I use a flat bladed screwdriver and just prise them out. Here you have your earth, live and neutral terminals. I loosen the screws using a flat bladed screwdriver rotating anti-clockwise. Now I place both the brown live wires into the live terminal and tighten up. We know it's the live terminal because it's marked with a letter L. Then I place the blue neutral wires into the neutral terminal marked with an N and tighten up. And finally the two earth wires into the earth terminal marked with an earth symbol inside the circle and tighten up. Once all the wires are nicely tight and secure, we can gently bend the wires as seen here and push gently into the Patras box. The key here is not to have any excessive force pushing back on the socket. There should be plenty of room for the wires to sit inside. Now I just repeat the process for the other socket. At this point it's worth me noting that if you've got old colour wiring, your live may be red and your neutral may be black. And can I just ask if you're finding this video useful, can you please give it a like and please subscribe to my channel as it will really help the channel out. Then taking the screws that we took from behind the socket earlier, we locate them into the threads inside the Patras box and tighten up. Now I go to other live sockets in the room and test for power using my electrical tester and the beep indicates that the power is on and my tester is working. Then I go to my consumer unit, I turn off the power for the downstairs sockets and then I go back and test again using the tester. I then do the same to the cable we're about to cut, ensuring the power is turned off and that the cable is safe to work on. Once we're completely satisfied that the power is turned off, we can break into the ring circuit by snipping the cable, then take the cable that we fed under the floor at the start of the video, and we need to snip that in two as well. We now have four cables, and we can prepare the ends as we did earlier by the sockets. I do this using my automatic wire strippers and side cutters. To make the connections between the cables, I'm using the Wago 222 connectors and the Wago box junction box to house them in. I line the box up on the joist where I want it, mark it off with a pencil, and I screw in this plastic clip using an impact driver, and the junction box slots over the top once the connections are made. And there's a closer look at the groove in the junction box that slides over the plastic clip I just screwed to the joist. I continue to prepare the ends of the remaining cables for the connectors. Here's a closer look at my Wago 222 connectors, and these are the twin connectors with two terminals, as that's all we need for this installation, although they do come in other sizes. And these require a 10mm length of stripped copper on the end of your cable. You lift the lever up, place one wire into the terminal, and close the lever. We put the two lives in one connector, the two earths in the other connector, and the two neutrals in the other connector. And I'll give you a better closer look at this in a minute when I do the other connectors. Then we take the connectors and place them in the purpose-made chamber at the end of the Wago box junction box, force them then into place along with the wires and the cable, and the grey sheath of the cable should be wedged between the gripper and the base of the box. You can then close the box and click into place, and then put it over the toggle that we secured to the joist earlier. So now I move on to the other connectors, repeating the process. First of all, screw in the little clip or toggle to the joist. Then I measure the length of the wires I need to strip to fit inside the Wago box. And I snip the cable to length using my side cutters. On this one, I stripped the grey sheath earlier using my wire strippers. I now match this to the other cable and do the same. Then I trim the ends off the individual wires ready for the connectors. And please don't forget that I'll put links to all the products and tools I use in the video in the description section below. So here's a much closer look at how I connect these wires. I open the lever on the Wago connector, place in the live wire and close the lever. Then I take the live wire from the other cable, place it into the other terminal and close the lever. Then I just repeat the process with all the connectors. And again, if you're still enjoying the video, then please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. With the earth wires as seen earlier in the video, we just get some sheath, place it over the top and cut it to length. And then place those in the connectors. With that done, we stuff the connectors down into the end of the box, pushing all the wires in neatly, ensuring that the grey sheath is housed between the gripper and the base of the box. 
Once that's done, we can clip the lid over into place and slot it over the clip on the joist and that's it job done to make the junction box maintenance free you have to put a cable tie through it securing the lid to the box but in case i need access to the box again before i've decorated the room i'm going to leave this for another day so you can see the original ring circuit coming from that socket on the wall under the floorboards and into our first junction box off to the new socket into the next one loops back around into the second junction box and then off to the old socket that's already on the wall completing the project now we need to go and turn the power back on we do this by turning back on the mcb powering the downstairs sockets you'll notice here where i've been doing the work the rcd is also tripped so we need to turn that back on as well using my electrical tester you can now see that power is running through the cables and into the sockets then i use my socket tester by plugging it into the sockets and the indication of the beep and the two green lights says that it's correct. Now I must point out that all domestic electrical work in Wales and England in the UK must meet the requirements of the Part P regulation. So if in doubt, get a qualified electrician and get it all tested and inspected. So there we go, that's the project complete and all that's left to do off camera is put the floorboards back down and decorate the room. So if you found this video useful, then please give it a like. If you're interested in any of the tools or the products used in the video, I'll put links to those in the description section below. If you're interested in what I get up to when I'm not doing DIY, you can head over to my other the channel pouse out of the house watch like share subscribe and finally if you haven't done so already please subscribe to this channel and press that bell icon for regular notifications i've been pouse around the house ta-ta farewell <laughs>